Hi, good morning. I am Pam Fox. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so this morning, I'm going to be sharing five um, tips to help you stay um, faithful to a plant-based diet. So a lot of what I do here on my channel, or a lot of the reason I even started this channel, was to help people try a plant-based diet. Because personally, I believe that once people get on a plant-based diet, they're going to do great. They're going to see improvements in their health. They're going to heal. They're probably going to they're going to lose weight if they have weight to lose. Um, and so that's always kind of been my goal because I know how hard it was for me just to start. It took me a year studying this stuff and coming back to it and coming back to it repetitively, repetitively. <laughs> um, and just not having the courage to try it. So I know how hard it is. So for those of you who are maybe getting ready to try, maybe you're just started a plant-based diet, maybe you're taking the 30 day challenge, um, equally important are ways to help you stick to it, ways to help you succeed at it. Because ideally, we want to be on this plant-based diet for life. I mean, it's not something we just want to, you know, like going on a Jenny Craig diet or whatever, just temporarily to lose weight. This is a, a lifestyle that we want to adhere to because it's going to help us be our best. It's going to help us be healthy and heal and, and, and feel our best. And, and not only that, it's going to help the environment and it's going to help the animals. So it's just a win-win-win. It's just a healthy, positive, logical, natural way to eat. Um, so let's get started. So the first tip that I have for you is support. That's number one. And it's so, so crucial for you to have support. Um, while being on this, trying out this new lifestyle. And I'm not just talking about, while it's important, I'm not just talking about support, like, oh, good job, I encourage you, that kind of support. While that is important, um, you need support. You need to surround yourself with other people who are either have gone through what you're going through, are going through what you're going through. And we, we, we can find that online. We can find that, you know, um, on the internet, on social media, we can find it. Um, through experts. And so um, when I first got started, I joined a lot of Facebook groups. Um, I went on YouTube a lot and watched other, there's a huge uh, vegan community on YouTube. So people like me who are on a plant-based diet and we share our stories, we share encouragements, we share tips. Um, so, you know, Facebook and YouTube are two really great places to get started. But having that support is so crucial because you're going to have questions. You're going to be able to look, what about this? And you can go on to that um, Facebook group, for example. And one recommendation that a group that I'm still into this day is called Raw Till Whenever. It's a Facebook group. You can go on there and ask to join. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty large group. And so if you have a question, you know, what about, you know, what are some recommendations for some vegan makeup or vegan cheeses or... You know, I, I was feeling constipated my first week. How, why is that happening? And so then people can jump on and say, oh yeah, that happened to me. You know, give it a couple of days or here's what I recommend or whatever. So it's a great place to get support and get your questions answered is to find a Facebook group with others that are going through the similar things or have gone through similar things. So make sure you have some type of support in place. Um, yeah. Okay. So number two is make sure that you're eating enough. That's number two. And it's also so, so important. So on a plant-based diet, typically, unless you're a, a junk, a junk food vegan, <laughs> which are typically vegans who are vegans simply for ethical reasons and they eat whatever they want. Like they live off of, you know, Pepsi and Oreos and potato chips. Um, but if you are on a whole foods plant-based diet and you're doing this to heal and or to lose weight, um, you have to make sure you're eating enough. We so easily fall into our old habits of restricting calories in order to manage our weight. And you can't do that on a plant-based diet. You have to make sure that you're reaching satiation. And, and I say that because what can happen is because plant foods are so much lower in calories, we eat these tiny little portions and then we feel hungry because we didn't eat enough. And so then we think, oh, I tried that vegan diet and it just didn't work for me. I was starving all the time. If that's happening to you, you're just not eating enough. And if you say, well, I'm eating a lot of food, a lot of food, which rarely happens, but it does happen. Um, Hannah is an example of that over at um, High Carb Hannah. That's her YouTube channel. 
When she first went on a plant-based diet, she did the diet called raw till four, which is the diet I did when I first went on a plant-based diet. But she found that she could never become satiated no matter, no matter how much she ate. And she said she was eating three to 4,000 calories a day. And she actually gained, I think she gained 30 or 40 pounds on a plant-based diet, which seems impossible. <laughs> it would cut out meat, dairy, and eggs, you know, this high source of fat and actually gain weight. But because she was eating so many calories, she did gain weight because she never felt satiated. But she started out on raw till four, which is a lot of raw. So that just didn't happen to work for her. She needed cooked food. Once she switched over to a diet called the starch solution, where she was eating a lot of cooked food, a lot of rices, potatoes, a lot of starch, which is very filling, then she was able to then lose all the weight and come to the point where she, she is today, where she's very happy and very healthy and at a, at a weight that she's happy with. Um, so the reason... The reason that we need to, re or not the reason, but the way we reach satiation, there's three um, things that need to happen when we eat in order to reach satiation. One is we need to reach or, or meet our caloric needs. So have, have you ever been on a calorie restrictive diet? Have you ever been on like, you know, a calorie restrictive diet where maybe you're eating, I don't know, like I've heard people say they've been on a diet where they eat 500 calories a day or 800 calories a day. <laughs> I've never been on a diet that restrictive, but I have cut back on my calories. Um, and so what happens when you cut back on your calories? You're hungry all the time. Um, you're not meeting your caloric needs. And so the caloric needs for each of us is going to be different depending on your size, depending on your health, depending on your activity level. You know, a lot of things can factor in. So I can't really say, you know, shoot for you know, 2,500 calories a day, although that's a good average, um, it's going to be different for everybody. So you kind of have to play with that, but make sure you're not under eating. Meet those caloric needs. The other thing is you need to meet your nutrient needs. So when you're on a whole foods plant-based diet and you're meeting your caloric needs, you're most likely going to meet your nutrient needs. What are nutrients? Nutrients are carbs, fat, protein, vitamins, minerals, fiber, water. These are all the components in plant foods. And if you're eating a variety and an abundance of plant foods, you're most likely going to meet those needs with a couple of exceptions. I mean, vitamin D, our body makes vitamin D when we're exposed to the sun. So if we never get out in the sun, we may have a vitamin D deficiency and we may need to take a supplement. Vitamin B12, vitamin B12 is a component in the soil. Unfortunately, in our world, because we are not the brightest species, in my opinion, we are depleting and killing our soil. Um, so we need healthy soil in order to have healthy food and unfortunately we're killing our soil. So we're killing off the bacteria in our soil, vitamin B12. Um, comes from that. So I take a vitamin B12 supplement. So you can take supplements for those things. But other than that, if you're, if you're eating a variety and an abundance of plant foods, you're going to meet all of your nutrient needs. How, now with that said, um, for whatever reason, and I don't understand this, but I'm just going to mention it. For whatever reason, when it comes to human beings, we, we are all different, obviously. And biologically, some of us may need a little more protein. Some of us may need a little more fat. And so, um, you know, if you're, if you're meeting your caloric needs and you're meeting your nutrient needs, um, but you're still not feeling your ideal, maybe you do need a little more protein. And so you have to eat, you know, more broccoli and more beans than you are. Maybe you need a little bit more fat. And so you're going to add in a little bit more coconut or a little bit more avocado or a little bit more nuts in order to feel satiated. So if you're on a plant-based diet and you just feel like you, you're hungry all the time, look at your calories. You can log on to chronometer.com. is a great source to check out your calories. Um, you just put in your food and it'll tell you your breakdown, carbs, fats, proteins, calories, vitamins, all of that. Um, but if you're meeting your caloric needs and you're still hungry, maybe you need to tweak it a little bit. Uh, try adding in more protein. Try adding in a little bit. And it might not take much. It might, might be a, hand, a palm full of nuts. In order to satiate it might be a quarter of an avocado added to a meal in order to satiate so you can try those things um, so make sure you're eating enough number three is to stick to the diet that you've chosen so there are a lot of ways to eat plant-based there are a lot of vegan diets so once you've chosen your diet and you're on your diet I recommend that you stick to that diet closely for 30 days don't jump around a lot in the first 30 days and 
excuse me, the reason I say this is because we really learn a lot in that 30 days about our body and about how we respond to eating a particular way. Um, for example, when I was on Raw Till 4, I learned that even though I am consider myself the world's biggest fruit lover, I learned that on Raw Till 4, which is where you eat, <laughs> they promote 2,000 calories of fruit by 4 o'clock, which I could never do, but I was doing you know, probably 15 to 1600 calories of fruit before four o'clock. And I learned that when I eat that much fruit, I get tired of fruit. I did that diet for nine months and I could do it no more. I learned that I get tired of fruit when I eat that much fruit. And I don't wanna get tired of fruit. I love fruit and I always want it to be important and special to me. Um, I also learned that I had <laughs> a lot of energy on a, on a raw till four diet, eating all of that sugar. Um, it was awesome and I loved that part of the diet. Um, what else did I learn? I learned that um, I could eat a lot of calories and still lose weight. That's what happened to me anyway on raw till four. Um, I learned that my digestion <laughs> could be just spot on perfect when you're eating a lot of fruit. So you learn these things about your body and about you know how it responds to certain foods. I also learned that um, I was pretty darn hungry by four, five, six o'clock when it was time for dinner and really looking forward to that cooked food, which really satiated me. Okay, so make sure that you're sticking to your diet for 30 days. And then after 30 days, like I said before, if you wanna tweak it, if you wanna try another plant-based diet, you know, do that. Switch over to, like I switched over to the starch solution. And now I do more of a raw till whenever um, style of eating, which just means I eat a combination of raw and cooked foods. I try to get a lot of fruit in early in the day, um, but I've kind of just created a diet that works for me. I eat, I try to eat intuitively, which is really big on raw till whenever. Learn, you know, intuitive eating, like I was saying before, how much protein do I need? How much fat do I need? How much sugar do I need? How does my body run the most efficiently and effectively and ideally, um, and still be able to really thoroughly enjoy, excitedly enjoy my food. And that's where I'm at today. Are my energy levels where they at, where they were on raw till four? No, they're not as good, um, but I enjoy the food so much more. So, you know, you have to find what works for you and that's what works for me. So stick to it closely for 30 days and then begin to either switch to another diet and stick to that for 30 days until you can kind of create what diet works for you. So number four, um, be open-minded. And the reason I say this is because um, you are switching over to a new way of a new way of eating that is considered so extreme and so different than the way you're currently eating. And so you really need to continue to be open-minded throughout this journey, this your journey. Um, open up the mind and just be a sponge. Try to learn as much as you can about plant-based eating, about veganism, about the health, the health impacts, about the environmental impacts, about the impacts to um, our animals. Um, learn it like, you know, it took me a while to go there, but eventually I did. I, when I was ready, I made myself learn about factory farming, about what's truly happening in that industry. And you know what that will do for you, what it did for me and what it does for a lot of people? It will motivate you to really want to stick to the, to the vegan lifestyle because you're not going to want any part of that. Um, I certainly never want to go back and I never will. Do I mess up from time to time and eat a Hershey's Kiss that's got milk chocolate in it? Occasionally, rarely. Um, I can honestly say the last time I had meat was Thanksgiving three years ago. I mean, it's, um, I really don't want to have anything to do with that. And when you really begin to allow yourself to be exposed to the truth, you're just, you're, it's going to really motivate you and push you in the direction towards plant-based eating and away from all of that other cruelty and, and not only the cruelty, but what it's doing to the environment. And so by being open-minded and by being a sponge and by learning as much as you can, you're going to watch a documentary like Cowspiracy, which is going to it's going to show you that even the leading, you know, environmental activism groups like PETA and these different groups, Sierra Club, not PETA, environmental groups, um, how 
even you can go onto their website and there's really very little mention about veganism, even though factory farming is the number one contributor to global warming. And so this, this documentary, Cowspiracy, exposes why that is. So go and watch that if you haven't already. And I'll give you a hint, they follow the money. And this is not a conspiracy. A lot of people think the movie Cowspiracy is about animals and they think it's a conspiracy theory. It's not. All of the information is right there on those websites like the Sierra Club and others. It's the sponsorships. It's who they're partnering with. That's why they're not putting this information on their website. Same thing with a new documentary called What the Health, which is made by the same people as Cowspiracy. Again, no conspiracy. They go on to the world leading health organization websites like the American Heart Association or the American Diabetes Association. And these websites are promoting recipes like uh, shrimp wrapped in bacon. Well, if a plant-based diet is the, is the way to cure diabetes or heart disease, why are they recommending these recipes? And again, there's no conspiracy. You can go right into the sponsorships and the partnerships of these groups and they're being sponsored by Tyson and they're being sponsored by Dannon. So yeah, they're, they're, not, they're gonna promote yogurt on their website because they're partnering with Dannon. They're receiving money from these companies that are very powerful and very wealthy and very smart. Um, so this is something we need to change and the more and more people that go plant-based are gonna create you know, less and less of a demand for those products and so then those companies are going to you know, either go out of business or they're going to make a change, which some of them are. They're making a change into promoting and producing, you know, milk companies, for example. You know, they've got the bottling equipment and the packaging and all of that. So they're starting to produce plant-based, you know, products like rice milk and soy milk, um, which is what we want to see happen. Because again, factory farming, factory farming is the number one contributor to global warming. So besides the fact that it's horrific <laughs> factory farming uh, for the animals and for the workers. So be open-minded, be a sponge, learn as much as you can. Watch those documentaries, go onto the sites, you know, go onto YouTube, find out what the, what the sci scientific data is saying about a plant-based diet. Find out what the anecdotal evidence, you know, stories like mine. Star McDougler's, check that out. That's just like story after story after story of people who went on a plant-based diet. And here's what happened. Forks Over Knives also has a testimonies link. Here, I went on a plant-based diet. Here's what happened. It's so motivating and empowering to hear a person after person after person saying, I healed this, I healed that, I healed this, I healed that, I lost weight. You know, I no longer take any medications. So, all right, moving on to number five, my last tip is you must must, must be patient and loving with yourself and with others. So it's really easy to, I know when I, the first 60 days of my plant-based diet, I experienced what seemed like miracles. And I wanted to go out and share that with everyone I loved and convert them to a plant-based diet. It didn't happen <laughs> because people are just like I was. They don't want to switch their diet. It seems scary, it seems illogical. Um, it seems stupid because I'm never gonna be able to stick to a plant-based diet. Why how, you know, I've tried diets before, I can't stick to them. Why would I be able to stick to that diet? You know, the most extreme diet ever. And so you must be patient with yourself, first of all, because you're probably gonna screw up. You're probably gonna make a meal that's not that tasty, you know, and you're gonna feel discouraged. You're probably gonna fall off the wagon. Um, you may have, you may, you know, the weight may come off very slowly, which might be frustrating. Um, you may have really high expectations because Pam Fox healed from all of these diseases and you know, here I am and I'm still constipated and whatever. Um, so be patient, stick with it for at least 30 days. That's the only way you're going to know if it's going to do anything for you is if you stick with it for at least 30 days and really pay attention, stick with it strictly. If you kind of do it half heartedly and you don't see the results, you know, there's a reason. Um, stick with it strictly for 30 days. You can do it for 30 days and really pay attention to how you're feeling. How is your digestion? How is your energy? How is, you know, the symptoms? Maybe you have pain or itching or um, uh, maybe you have a hard time sleeping or headaches or whatever it is, acne. Pay attention to all of those things. Keep a journal if you need to. Pay attention to all of those things and really truly see how this diet is working for you and know that in time, it, the diet will get easier and easier as you really start to collect 
um, a repertoire of recipes and meals that you really love. And as you begin to um, really um, empower yourself with knowledge that what you are doing is such a good thing in so many ways. Um, so you've got to be patient with yourself. Be patient with others. You know, if people are going to tease you about your diet, just relax, ignore them. I, <laughs> people will make comments. You have to be ready for that in the beginning. And, I, you know, for personally, I'm not a fighter. So I try not to fight. If people ask questions, I give try to answers and, you know, um, do the best I can with that. But for the most part, I just ignore the comments and hope and pray that people will come around. And I do have a lot of hope that people will come around because I did after all. So and people, meat eaters uh, bigger than me, like, you know, who love meat more than I even did, um, have come around. So I have hope that they will come around, that, that we all will come around. Really, there's really no choice. The, the planet must become vegan eventually because factory farming and, and creating animal foods is not sustainable for this planet. We just cannot keep up at the rate we are going. Um, you know, maybe one day people will raise their own meat and that's, you know, if they really want to eat meat, that's how it will be. But the factory farming is going to be a thing of the past eventually. We're not going to get there soon enough, but it's just not sustainable. It's just not. So I really wanted to keep this video under 10 minutes. Ah, I'm so bad. I think that's it. All right. So those are my tips for those of you that are trying a plant-based diet. Awesome. Congratulations. Keep it up. Um, and um, just remember that what you're doing is, is so valuable and so important. So keep congratulations and keep up the good work. All right. Thanks for watching.